Hello students, today we're going to be working with the concept of the normal distribution, which I hope uh, most of you, if not all of you, are somewhat familiar with from your statistics classes you've taken. The normal distribution is very important in statistics. In fact, our textbook says the single most important distribution in statistics is the normal distribution. So I figured before we move into the chapter 5 problems in which we're going to utilize a normal distribution assumption or a normal distribution empirical observation about certain statistics we'll find in, in business data. Let's spend some time familiarizing ourselves or refamiliarizing ourselves with what the normal distribution is, how it functions, and work with some examples. And then in particular, we want to work through the concept of standardizing values that we observe to a standard normal distribution with uh, the concept of z-scores. The best way to think about the normal distribution is the classic bell shape distribution. On our horizontal axis, we're basically thinking about possible values of a variable in question, which we'll label x. And then on the vertical axis, we're looking at the frequency of each value. In other words, how often does it pop up in our observations? Okay, so what we can see in the bell shape is that the uh, observations are clustered around the middle of the distribution, and it is a perfectly symmetric distribution. So there's as many observations on, on the left as there are on the right. And there are, are as many observations at each distance from the central measurement here. And of course, the center of, the, of any distribution is the median. So the center is indeed the median. What's also true in a normal distribution is the center is the mean. So in a normal distribution, the median is equal to the mean. So we've got the median and the mean right here in the center. We've got an equal number of observations and equal distance on the left and right. So think about it in terms of the, the bell curve think about it in terms of symmetry, and then finally we want to think about it in terms of values being clustered fairly tightly around the mean. Okay, and to, and to help us think about what we mean by this, this grouping of values around the mean, I wanted to take a look at a data set that does exhibit um, normal tendencies in its di distribution. And there's, there's several we could look at. Um, and we could basically think about any variable that results from a process that involves randomness. If you look at natural phenomena, if you look at um, the size of plants or animals, uh, one thing we'll look at here in a few minutes to talk about uh, standardizing is um, human height. Heights of people are distributed normally. In a business setting, the, the average money spent by a, a, a customer would be normally distrib distributed. There's a lot of things out there that have randomness that are going to exhibit normal tendencies. Um, Test scores are usually distributed somewhat normally. And to demonstrate that, I went back in my files and I grabbed a uh, set here of midterm scores from, uh, I used to teach five sections of macroeconomics. So I had a total of, uh, let's see here, 233 students. And I just took all the names off and copied over the midterm scores for them. To demonstrate normality, what I've done is made a histogram. We're all familiar with this. Right, let me make this a little bigger. I, I created bins going from 5 to 105. The, there is a possibility of extra credit on my exam, so I have to recognize that. And note what we're observing here Okay, is that kind of bell-shaped distribution in the histogram. Okay, so I've copied my histogram over here so I can uh, draw on it. And you know we basically see clustered around that central value, the mean and the median, and I think for this set of scores it was, uh, it was actually adjusted to where the, med the mean I set that to be equal to 75. And then the standard deviation, which we'll label as sigma, I set that as equal to 15. So we can see we've got more or less that bell shape curve describing the um, cumulative frequencies. Right? So they're, they're clustered around the, the middle value of a, a score of 75, which is the mean and the median. And then most of them are within some distance of that mean or median. And when we talk about uh, the, how we define a normal distribution, we'll talk about the empirical rules, which I'll get into here in just a second. Now, a histogram is a uh, discrete d distribution. If we want to think about this kind of in pure math terms, we'd have to create what we call a density function. And I've actually done that here. And I've created a, a density function for a normal distribution with mean 75 and standard deviation 15. And uh, this is just an FYI. The way to do this in Excel is 
to uh, create a, a range of values and then put the formula. You'll notice it's a, it's a pretty hairy formula to create that density function. There's a lot of parentheses to get right. You don't you won't have to do this, but I just want to show you the concept here. And the, the cool thing about Excel is I'll be able to change these values and we'll we'll be able to watch the uh, distribution, or the density function of the distribution move. So if I raise the mean up to 85, we'll see that uh, the curve shifts to where the center is now 85 or I could lower it down to 50 and we'll see that uh, distribution bounce back to the left. But, um, okay, so I move that over uh, to where I can draw with it. And remember the middle is the, the mean slash median at a value of 75, a score of 75. The real definition of the normal distribution other than the shape, the symmetri this, um, symmetry and the bell shape is that there's a, a regularity to the, uh, to the the dispersion or the width, if you will, of the distribution. So if we go out plus or minus one standard deviation, one sigma, here where I'm, I'm at minus one sigma, which remember was uh, 15 percent percentage points in my in my test scores. So this would be um, down to 60 scores of 60 percent, or plus one sigma, which would be a all right here, let's say, which would bring us up to the, uh, the average. The mean is 75. Remember. That's the mean. Uh, plus one sigma would bring us up to 90. It's defined that there are 68 percent, or 34. We could think about 34 percent between the mean and one sigma to the left, and 34 percent between the mean and one sigma to the right, or a total of 68 percent of observations lie within one standard deviation of the mean. And that's actually what the the density function here is telling us. It's thinking about this in terms of the probability of when we draw a value at random that it's going to lie in this region of the distribution. So we can see that most of the values are within one standard deviation of the mean, two-thirds roughly of the values. Okay, uh, And when we go out to plus or minus two standard deviations, so we got here to minus two sigma or plus two sigma, now we're oh, picking up an additional about 14 percentage points more, so there's about 14 percent more in here between minus one and minus two sigma, and 14 percent in here between plus one and plus two sigma. Altogether, between um, minus two sigma and two sigma, altogether in this range, plus minus two standard deviations, we've got a total now of 95.5 uh, percent. So the vast majority of observations lie within two standard deviations of the mean. And finally, we go within three standard deviations, minus three sigma, plus three sigma, which might be kind of off my chart here because I haven't extended it, but it would still there would still be technically possible observations, although very rare. Now we've added about another um, about another 2.1 percent of observations in this range, and another 2.1 in this range. So in other words, between plus two and three sigma or minus two and three sigma, another 2.1 on both sides, cumulatively another 4.2%. So that means in this, in the entire, basically the entire distribution, which I'll kind of shade in green now, from minus three to standard deviations to the left to plus three standard deviations to the right. Now we've got 99.7% of observations. So in other words, we've got um, almost everything is within three standard deviations of the mean, and it's extremely rare to ob observe anything to the, to the left or right of that. And that brings up what's known in statistics as the empirical rules, and you might be familiar with these. I hope you're familiar with these from your, from your stats experience. Um, plus and minus one sigma contains roughly 68% of all observations, plus and minus two uh, sigma contains 95.5% and plus and minus 3 contains 99.7% as we've just discussed here. Okay, so I'm back in uh, my Excel generated uh, density function and now that we've got a really good idea of what the normal distribution is, okay, this concept of the, um, the mean, it's really defined by its mean, uh, its symmetry, and then its, its dispersion in terms of its standard deviation. Right, so we've and we've got those empirical rules in mind. Well, the way I set this up in Excel, you'll notice I can I can input my values because my my density function is cell reference based. So I can change the value of my mean or standard deviation, and we'll see that that changes the shape of the uh, density function of this distribution, but doesn't change the parameters. It doesn't change the definition. So, for example, let's let's reduce the dispersion. So instead of having a standard deviation of 15, let's make it 10. 
and I'll press enter and notice what happens. It makes it narrower. And if you couldn't see that, let's make it even smaller. Let's make it five. So now we've got a narrower spread of um, observations or probabilities of observation, but still 68% are going to be within plus and minus one sigma and 95.5% are going to be within plus and minus two sigma and so on. Whether I, whether I narrow the spread by having a smaller standard deviation or increase the spread. If I increase it up to let's say 25, we'll see we have a much fatter distribution. We'll see we have a much um, wider bell, but the, prop the properties of the distribution still apply. 68% between plus and minus one standard deviation and so on. So we can do that with anything. We can have the mean, we could have adjust the mean to any value. I could raise it up to 85. Okay, and I'll put my standard deviation back to 15. Okay, as I bump that mean up, 95, 99. We're just uh, we're just moving it about based on changing values of the mean. Okay, so we can slide it to the left and right by changing the mean or we can both slide it and change its the the width of the bell by changing the standard deviation. Okay, so with all of that in mind, let's let's think about a a real life example and I like to use this one because it's kind of a something we see on an everyday basis. Uh, let's think about the distribution of of male heights in the United States. The mean is 5 foot 9 it's actually five nine and a half. But I'm just going to round to make the numbers a little easier, or 69 inches. And the standard deviation is three inches. So I'll I'll go out. I'll go ahead and do um, minus one sigma, which takes us to 66 inches or five foot six. Minus two sigma, which would be 63 inches, or five foot three. And let's do plus plus one sigma. That's one sigma, which would be 72 inches or six foot. And then plus two sigma, which of course would be 75 inches or six foot three. Okay, then we can draw our curve. It's going to look something like this. I like to think about the distribution of male heights because it's something we observe every day and it's easy to kind of populate this distribution with representative examples. So here I've, I've got uh, representative examples of uh, men at every um, point here at the median. I've got Robert Downey Jr., Iron Man, you might know him from the movies. Uh, one standard deviation to the right at six foot even is uh, former President George W. Bush. One standard deviation to the left is actor um, Martin Freeman as The Hobbit. Uh, two standard deviations to the right at six foot three is uh, your own Professor Watts. Uh, two standard deviations to the left at five foot three is uh, the singer and musician Prince. So you can think along these lines. Well, 99.5 percent of people are um, between Dr. Watts and Prince and height, something like that. 95 percent of men, anyway. We want to think about how do we think of uh, extreme observations. So let me bring in what we call outliers. Let me bring in, on the right of the distribution, Shaquille O'Neal at seven foot one. Oh, come on over here then. <laughs> and to, on the left side of the distribution, uh, actor Peter Dinklage at four foot five. You feeling strong, my friend? Call me Elf one more time. He's an angry elf. Well, we can use that idea of the normal distribution and the standard deviations measurement to think about their the uh, rarity of encountering somebody at either end of that distribution, either at the at the tall or short end. To help us simplify how we think about the um, the range of values and the relative values of observations within this, um, a normal distribution, we're going to do something called the uh, standard. We're going to use a tool called the standard normal distribution and a tool called the z-score. First off, let's describe the standard normal distribution. It's going to have our familiar bell shape, and we've just defined on the standard normal distribution the mean to be zero, 
and then uh, standard deviation uh, of one. So sigma equals one. So we've just basically uh, fixed the parameters, the mean and the standard deviation. Okay, and the way we would denote this is n zero comma one. So the mean there and the standard deviation. Okay, so we've just locked in the parameters basically. But now what we can do if we can convert because a, a normal distribution has the same features of, as a normal distribution, so we can convert the values in a different distribution, say our male height distribution, into, this, into the standard normal distribution. And the way we do that is with a z-score. So we're going to standardize uh, the, a value, and we're going to basically put it in terms of the standard normal distribution. And we now kind of think about this as we're not measuring our height in inches anymore, we're measuring it in terms of standard deviations from the mean because it is normally distributed. So we do that with the z-score, and the z-score, calculating the z-score is very simple. We take the observation minus its mean, so x minus mu, divided by the standard deviation. Okay. So let's do an example of this. We want to think about Shaq, Shaquille O'Neal, at um, 7 foot 1 or 85 inches. That's the x. The mean, remember, for male height was 5 foot 9, which is 69 inches. And the sigma, standard deviation, is 3 inches, right? Okay, and this works out to 16 over 3, or 5.33. So what we're saying is that Shaq, in terms of uh, the standard normal distribution, the z score, is 5.33 standard deviations to the right of the mean. Okay, so I go back up here. And if I wanted to chart Shaq, see I'm at 1, 2, uh, I'm going to call it 3 sigma, 4 sigma, 5 sigma. An extreme outlier. Okay. And uh, in terms of thinking about the, the percentage, the cumulative percentage that's below that, it's off the charts for most, for most of, your, of your standard normal uh, percent charts. You look at his, what's called a z-table here. And basically what we're doing is, is the z-score, we go from zero up to one, two, three, and then we can go out to um, to hundreds here by going. So, like for instance, 1.23 would be um, right right here, and we we'd say at 1.23 uh, standard deviations to the right, 89% of of observations are to the left of that. You know, uh, we can think about our empirical rule here in terms of in terms of the z table. Uh, one standard deviation, 1.0 standard deviations right here, 84% of observations are to the left of that. Okay, but what we want to think about with those empirical rules is how many are between 1 and, and minus 1 standard deviations. Well, I know that between 1 and 0, by definition, the um, 0, the, the mean, which is also the median, that's the 50th percentile, so 50% are to the left of that. So between 0 and 1, I've got from 50 up to 84% uh, here, or 34 percent, right? So I've got 34 percent between zero and, and plus one sigma. Then I also, by definition, have 34 percent between zero and minus one sigma. So I add those together: 34 plus 34, 68 percent of observations between plus one and minus one sigma. Okay, so you might have in your stats class, you might have had to uh, calculate z-scores and then look up the percentages here on the z-table. We won't have to do that in this class, but I do want us to be familiar with what z-scores are doing. Okay, so back to the examples. Here's Shaq at 5.3 standard deviations to the right of the mean. Uh, let's, we could also calculate that for um, our other outlier, Peter Dinklage. And he was uh, below the mean, so we're going to have a negative value here. But we'll get the same c concept. We'll just have uh, negatives, measure this in negative standard deviations. He was 4 foot 5, which is 53 inches. So that's the x. The mean is always 69. Minus, or... So x minus mu divided by the standard deviation of 3. That actually works out to minus 16 over 3, which gives us minus 5.33. Uh, coincidentally enough, uh, Peter Dinklage is sitting out here at 3, 4, 5, um, minus 5 sigma, minus 5.3 technically. Okay. Yeah, five, minus 5 or minus 5.3 sigma really is going to be statistically um, irrelevant. Okay, that's a, that's an extreme outlier. So we've got an extreme outlier, five standard deviations to the right, an extreme outlier, five standard deviations to the left. And then we've got to kind of think about in terms of our empirical rules, right? 
of men are between the height of the Hobbit and George W. Bush, and 95% of men in the U.S. are between the height of Prince and Professor Watts, right? And then we've got our outliers. We can convert any of these to z-scores. Let me just show you one more example. You know, convert convert my height, which is 75 minus 69 divided by 3. The actual observation x minus the mean, 69 divided by the sigma 3. And that, of course, is 6 over 3. Or, well, yeah, we knew this too, right? We, we knew already that I'm the our representative of 2 sigma. Um, my height is 2 standard deviations to the right of the mean. Okay, so that's the idea of, of standardizing with the standard normal distribution. We can convert anything into z scores, and then we, it kind of makes the comparison a little easier. And then with z scores, we can go and look at z tables like this and say, what's a cumulative percentage, right? So, you know, if, take a look, for example, at, at my height of 75 inches, which remember was calculated in, in standard terms to uh, two standard deviations, 2.0 standard deviations. So we, what we can say here is 97.72% of observations are to the left of that. So you know, we could also think about that in percentile terms. I would be in the 97.7 uh, percentile of height. Okay, so that's standardizing normal distribution. And I think that brings us up to speed on the, on the concept of the normal distribution. One more quick thing I want to show you with this concept of standardizing, and we'll, we'll be able to use Excel to do all the work for us. And there's an example in the chapter that I think is really useful that I just want to briefly work us through to show the, the, the relevance of this and then how easy it is really to do it in Excel. So um, this is right from the book, example 5.1, standardizing returns for mutual funds. It says the annual returns for 30 mutual funds appear in the figure. And we've got the spreadsheet version of this here in Excel. It says find and interpret the Z values of these returns. So we were assuming that the uh, the funds, the returns of the funds are normally distributed. So we can convert them from numbers to Z scores and then kind of clarify how extreme they are, right? If it's one standard deviation, plus or minus, it's not very extreme. We would expect most values to lie within that range. If we see values three, you know, even two, three standard deviations. Okay, then we know that's an extreme situation, right? So it kind of uh, it, it clarifies the numbers we might not be familiar with these distributions. It converts them into the standardized normal distribution, which we are very familiar with, at least in terms of the of the relative frequencies and the probabilities of of getting those values. So to standardize, we we've got to know what the mean and standard deviation is. So that's pretty easy. So here in B4, I'm just going to calculate the mean equals average of the returns. Okay. Fortunately, there's not too many of them. Okay, so I just calculated my mean, and the, the mean is 0 0.091. I'm not going to put that in a percent form because I want to keep it in the same format as these, and these are in decimal form. Okay, and then we're going to find the stand the standard deviation. Now, should we use, is it a population or a sample here? It's most likely a sample. Um, if you did mistakenly use the standard deviation formula for population, it's not going to make that big of a difference. It just, it, it's a one, it, it's a change of one in the denominator, whether we use n or n minus one. So, but uh, it's technically a sample. So, and the range, I could either click it or type it. I'll, I'll just click it. It's a small one. Uh, I'll click and drag here. Okay, so there, I've calculated my mean standard deviation. Now to calculate the z value, let's just use the z value formula and then we'll fill it. So that's the value, the observation, I'll use some parentheses here. That's the observation minus the mean. Now lock that cell reference people, otherwise it's going to slide down and start giving us all kinds of weird stuff. I need to re refer to B4 every time, cell B4 every time as I slide this down, so B dollar sign 4. So the observation x minus the mean, mu, so that's x minus mu, divided by the standard deviation. And again, we need to lock that standard deviation reference in, so B dollar sign 5. And now I will just double click and fill that in. Okay, now I've got this in terms of sigmas, and I can just kind of quickly glance down there and say, ah, oh, here's, here's one that's pretty strong to the left, minus 1.8 standard deviations. Here's another one, let's see if this, oh, 2.19. Okay, that's a, that's a about not 98 percentile probably. That's uh, pretty strong to the right. Okay, so it, it helps me interpret these numbers more more clearly in terms of that distribution. 
Okay, so we calculate with the, um, just by entering the formula, now if you want a shortcut, Excel also has the standardized function. Okay, and the, the arguments here are the x, which is back here, the return value. The mean, which is up here, b dollar sign 4, let's lock it. And the standard deviation. And let's again lock that b dollar sign 5 for when we fill. And look, it's the exact same thing. I, it's probably just as easy to enter the formula, but you can use the Excel's function. Can we fill that? Right. And we will be using these this kind of stuff in the homework. In fact, uh, I hope in the homework we'll be able to combine, start really combining all the kind of things we've learned, um, and we'll start to really get some powerful analytical tools with Excel. So let's turn now to the homework.